Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be trying out some new products. I have some PR and some makeup that I bought over the past few weeks and I haven't tried it yet. I have a new Lancome foundation, or it's new to me. I have the new Surratt concealers. I have some Jane Iredell products. Uh, I have the new Natasha Denona Starlet palette and some other things too that I wanted to try. So I hope you enjoy hanging out with me, doing some makeup and trying some new products. If you're new here, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of beauty and makeup content here on YouTube three times a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I hope you'll subscribe and let's just get into the makeup. All right, the first thing I wanted to use today is this Lancome foundation. This is the Tint Idol Ultra Wear Care and Glow foundation. I've been wanting to try this forever and I haven't mainly because I couldn't decide on a shade for me but I finally decided to just pick and try it out. I ended up buying this a few weeks ago when Ulta did I think they were doing like 10 times the points on foundations and I bought this during that because that's amazing. Ulta's reward system, their point system is so good. But I went with this shade, which is 125. So I don't know. We will see what we think of it. But every time I see someone using this foundation, I'm always just mesmerized by how pretty it looks on their skin. And it's actually a little bit thicker than I was thinking it was going to be. I thought this was going to be like more of a lightweight foundation, but it's actually kind of a thicker, creamier feel. Okay, and I'm just going to blend with this brush. This is a Sigma F80 brush because this is all I have sitting out that's clean. And we'll just blend this in. But yeah, this is obviously not a new foundation. It's been out for a while. So this is just a product I was curious about, so I decided to try it. It does have yeah, it has quite a bit of fragrance in it if that bothers you. I did not use any primer or anything today. I didn't have anything new to use and I figured we'd just do this without any of that to see how it is with nothing. Okay, so the coverage I would say is pretty light right now. It's, I would say like a light medium coverage. I'm gonna add a little bit more and see if you can build it up at all. So there it is, applied all over. I did add a little bit more right here, see if I could build up the coverage at all. I do think it is buildable. I would say this is like a medium coverage right now. And I have to say, I mean, the finish on this is so pretty. That's why I was really curious about it, because like I said earlier, every time I see someone apply this or wearing this, I always think how pretty it looks on their skin. It's just, it's a very, I would say more of a natural finish. It's definitely got a little bit of glow to it, but it's not anything that's like super, super dewy and glowy. But on my skin, it looks incredibly natural, like very, very natural, not makeup-y at all and actually i don't think the shade matches bad it took me forever to pick this shade all right i do have a new concealer to try this is the surat dewdrop concealer this was sent to me in pr this is the dewdrop concealer it retails for 48 dollars it's pretty expensive and only comes in 10 shades which I don't know about that. It says 10 versatile shades. I don't know. It says it is based on the best selling Dewdrop foundation. It says it's creamy, hydrating, and buildable, has skincare ingredients, helps to reduce the appearance of darkness and puffiness, light to medium coverage with a natural looking finish. So I definitely want to try this today. I think I might do one side with corrector underneath and one side without corrector. And they sent me two shades. They sent me shade number two and number three. So it's in this packaging. It's the typical Surratt black, but it's kind of like iridescent looking. And this is one of the sponge tip applicator concealers, which is not 
typically my favorite, but I want to try this out. So let me swatch these. So let's see. Definitely going to have to twist it for a little bit. So that is shade number two, which looks really, really light. That looks super light, so I'm guessing I'm probably going to want shade number three. So let's open shade three. So this is shade two and this is shade three. I mean, shade three is definitely going to be closer. Um, shade three also looks a little bit peachy, which I like. So I think we'll go with shade three. Shade two is super light. But let's go ahead and do a little bit of corrector under one eye because if you know me, you know I don't apply concealer ever without corrector, but I will on one side just so we can kind of see the difference. Just tapping that in with a brush. Now let's go in with this, shade number three. So the consistency definitely feels super, super, super thin. Very hydrating and very, very thin. So I would assume this is probably gonna be a lighter coverage concealer, but let's try it out. So we'll do this eye with the corrector first. I'm gonna blend that in with the BK Beauty 110. I was really intrigued when I saw that Surratt was coming out with this because the Dewdrop foundation they sent to me a while ago and that foundation, if you saw the video I did, the Surratt video, that foundation is probably the most undetectable skin foundation product that I have ever tried out of anything. I mean, it looks like nothing, but like in the best way. It, it truly is just like nothing. It just somehow very, very lightly evens out your skin tone and just, I don't know how to explain it, but if you've tried that product, you probably know what I mean. So there it is there. It looks nice, definitely extremely hydrating extremely hydrating. Definitely not a lot of coverage though. I feel like you can definitely still see some of the darkness peeking through right there and that's with a color corrector on underneath. But I like the finish. The finish is really nice. I just, I don't know it's going to be enough coverage for my preferences personally. But I mean for like a no makeup makeup day or if you are not looking so much for coverage or looking for just a little bit of something with some hydration for under the eyes, you might like it. But let's go ahead and apply this on the other eye. I'm gonna do two dots on this eye since I don't have any corrector over here. And I'm just gonna use that same brush to tap this in. It's definitely, yeah, like a with no corrector underneath, I would say light medium coverage at the most. I don't really see you getting a full full on medium coverage with this, but it's not what I typically prefer for under my eyes. I like at least a medium coverage just because I have a lot of darkness under my eyes. I also don't love the packaging on this. These uh, wands, the sponge tips like this. I wish this packaging would go away in general in makeup just because at first it's messy and I don't know, I'm just not a huge fan of it. I don't know you guys, we'll see how it looks after I've finished my makeup, but for me to recommend it for $48, it's got to really knock my socks off and my socks are not knocked at this point, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, but it doesn't look bad. It's not like I, I think my under eyes look terrible. It's just not what I typically go for. I'm also not a huge fan of these colors, to be honest. I mean, number three is definitely a better match, but I don't, as you probably know if you watch my videos, I don't love a super bright under eye. I like something to match my face pretty well. I don't know. I just don't love that super bright under eye on myself. So I'm not a huge fan of the shades either. 
Okay, I'm actually gonna add a little bit on my face right here just to get a little bit more coverage because that Lancome foundation is beautiful. Like the finish is beautiful, but I do wish it had just like a little bit more coverage. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this and try to get a little bit more. Okay, I do have a new bronzer to try. This was sent to me in PR a few weeks ago. I haven't tried it yet. It's from the brand Rodeal and it's their Blurring Bronzer. So they actually sent me a few products and I haven't really, I haven't really tried them yet, but I wanted to use this bronzer today. The packaging is very nice. It's like a really chunky, thick packaging and this here almost, it looks kind of like alligator, I guess, <laughs> or like, I don't know, is it alligator? Whatever this kind of like print is. I can't think of it right now. I keep thinking of alligator. I don't know if that's even right. Ooh, it feels very thin. What is the name of this? The shade is, what is the shade? Okay, I don't see a shade on it. So maybe there's only one shade. I don't know. I don't see a shade on here. But anyway, that is the swatch. So it feels very, very thin and creamy. It kind of reminds me of the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer, which I love. It's that kind of balmy consistency, very thin, almost a little bit oily. If you if you tried the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer, you probably know what I mean, but that's kind of what this is reminding me of. I'm going to use this Fenty 125 brush. Okay, yeah, so it's applying really beautifully. Yeah, it's called the Blurring Cream Bronzer, and that's kind of how it's applying. It has a very, like, smooth, almost velvety look on the skin, and it, I mean, it's, like, melting into the skin. I don't know if I love the color of it, though. I don't know. I can't really tell, but it's applying really nicely. The... The way it looks on my skin really reminds me of that Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer, but the Makeup by Mario is not blurring at all. It's pretty dewy and I wouldn't call it blurring at all, but this one actually does have like a slight blurring quality to it, which is very interesting. Let me look up close. Yeah, I mean on my skin, it looks really nice really really nice and now looking at it I don't think the color looks that off I thought when I first was applying it I wasn't gonna like the shade on this but I love the way it looks I mean it looks extremely it doesn't look like bronzer at all it just looks like my skin is that color where I put it I've actually never heard anyone say anything about rodeal ever I don't think I don't know really anything about their products. All right, yeah, the more I sit and look at this bronzer, the more I really, really like it. And I did just pull it up. It only comes in one shade and they say it's a universal shade, which I don't know how that could be possible, but that's what the description says. But I will say I love the way it looks on my skin. All right, for a blush, we're gonna use this. This, I will say, is not a first impression. I have already tried this twice but not in a video so I figured we could use it today. This is the new Givenchy powder blush in the shade 02 which is Taffetas Rosé. So it's pink like the one number one shade but this one is not quite as cool toned as the first shade I think. I'm just gonna get some in the cap. I think the trickiest thing with this is getting the product like evenly applied on your skin just because it's a loose blush. So typically what I do is just kind of build it up in a brush, like really swirl it in there and tap it on. And I will also say these are very subtle, like they're not super intense pigment, which is good because I feel like in a loose version like this, if it was, that would be almost impossible to apply. So I appreciate the fact that it's more buildable. 
Um, but like you can see there, it's not super intense pigment. It's there, but it's definitely more on the buildable side, I would say. So there's that. But the times I have used it, I've loved it personally. I, if I had the choice, I would always choose more of a buildable blush formula just because sometimes you don't want intense pigment, you know, and sometimes that can even be difficult to apply and especially for someone that's not, you know, maybe not the most experienced with applying makeup or blush, stuff like that can be really intimidating, but this is not at all. I'm going to add just a little bit more. If you have one of these, let me know what you think of them. I, I feel like I've heard mostly positive things, but I'm curious what you guys think. If you have one, let me know. I also do think that this has a blurring quality to it, which I really, really like. I think that's a very unique and it, I'm sure it comes from the Prisma Libre powder that this is, you know, modeled after I would assume but I do love the finish of it honestly it's kind of blurring like that bronzer we just applied this is just a powder and not a cream but I have to say I really really like the way it looks okay I also want to try this little mini powder from Rodeal so the same brand as the bronzer they sent this to me as well this is their glass powder and it's just a little baby mini size but I am not familiar with this product at all, but I'm very curious. So it looks like it's just a translucent powder. I'm wondering if it's maybe kind of like the By Terry um, Hyal Hyaluronic powder. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm wondering if this is like that. I'm gonna use this little Charlotte Tilbury brush. Okay, yeah, it definitely smoothed this area for sure. I don't know if it will pick up on camera, but it definitely just kind of smoothed this area. All right, let's do the other side. Okay, so I don't know if you'll be able to see, but I mean, it really smoothed over my skin in that area. It's reminding me of the House Labs powder, the bio blurring powder, which has been a favorite of mine for quite a while. But this is how that powder looks on me as well. It just really smooths and blurs this area where I notice my pores the most, but it does not look powdery. That looks really, really beautiful in this area. Okay, I have some new brow products from Jane Iredell. I have two of their brow pencils and then I have a brow gel as well. So they have a pure brow shaping pencil and then a precision pencil. And they sent me medium brown in both. I've been trying a bunch of Jane Iredell products lately and I really like most of what I've tried. But let's go ahead and use one of these. So one kind of skinny and one is a little bit more fat. I think this one, yeah. So the shaping pencil has more of like an angled, almost like a triangular tip like that. And then the precision pencil is much smaller. As you can see, I typically go for a smaller pencil. We'll probably go with this one today in the shade medium brown. I'm going to do what I've been doing lately when I fill in my brows, which is kind of brush them down first. And then you can kind of see the natural shape of your brow and you can kind of outline it just a little bit. Then when you brush them back up in place, you can kind of see where you need to add more. So I have like this brow is my easier brow of the two. If you have an easier brow of your brows, let me know because I feel like everybody has an easier eye and an easier brow. This one is definitely my easier brow of the two. This one is much more difficult for me. 
definitely very good shade match for me. It's a pretty creamy formula, but I have found lately, if you've never done this where you kind of brush your brows down first and then fill them in, I highly recommend. I've never done that until like the last six months. I saw one of my makeup, one of the makeup artists I follow on Instagram doing that and I've been doing it ever since. I swear it really does make a difference when you fill in your brows. I've also found sometimes if you brush or use your brow pencil kind of against the grain or the growth of your brow hair, sometimes you can get a softer appearance that way. So you can do that and then use your spoolie and kind of brush it through. And I found that that helps sometimes, especially like in this front area. I never really know what to do because I feel like I kind of want to fill in just a little bit, but I don't want to do too much. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there. You do kind of have to use lighter pressure with this pencil. I do think it's pretty pigmented, so I can definitely see if I pressed too hard with this one. It might be a little bit too much, so you do have to kind of be careful. Let's do a little bit of the brow gel. So this is the Pure Brow brow gel and clear. They also had uh, tinted ones, but I just went with the clear one. So this is just pretty basic brow gel. I opened this up the other day just to look at it. And one thing I do really like about this is look how small this wand is. I wish more brands would make brow gels with a wand like this because you don't need a large wand for your brows. I feel like most people would probably prefer a smaller one. So that is definitely something that stood out to me about this. I love this small applicator. I finished my brows and I went ahead and put on a little bit of this Makeup by Mario eye prep on my eyes. And now we're going to move on to this new Natasha Denona palette. I knew as soon as I saw this previewed that I had to have it. I just love this color story just really spoke to me. Of course, it's very light and ethereal looking and just, I just knew I had to have it. So I'm excited to use this today. This is the mini starlet palette. So these are all actually repeat shades from some of her palettes. I think it's the Lila palette and the Starlet palette, but I don't have either of those. So these are not repeat shades for me, but I, I don't know. Something about this color story, especially this beautiful Galaxia shade right here, I cannot wait to use. All right, sorry if you could hear my cat trying to get into my office. He is always dying to get in here when I'm filming. You probably hear him again. I'm gonna go into this shade right here, which is Vega. It's kind of like a matte, light peachy shade. And I'm gonna apply this as my crease shade. I really like this color. So pretty. And I'm using a BK Beauty A503 to apply this. Really, really creamy, smooth application on this so far. Also, when I'm filming this, the I Need a Nude palette from Natasha Denona just got released for Rouge members at Sephora today. So I ordered that this morning. I cannot wait to try that palette. That palette looks so so stunning, I'm so excited for it. Okay, I'm gonna go into this shade right here. It's kind of a rosy bronze color. I'm gonna apply this on the lid, kind of all the way in and all the way out. I am gonna apply a little bit of the Galaxia shade, so don't worry, but I really wanted to put this on my lid. Do you hear the crinkling noises? It's my cat. Okay, I'm gonna go into this shade 
right here, which is nude mauve. And I'm going to take that on a smaller little crease brush in the outer corner. I love that color too. I feel like this is a really good palette for anyone that has green or hazel eyes. These colors really, really complement that. All right, now I'm going to go into this beautiful shade here, which is Galaxia. And look at that on my finger. And I'm going to just use my finger with this and just tap this in the center of the lid. Oh, that is so pretty. I absolutely love this color story. This is probably the most excited I've ever been about one of her mini palettes. I just love this choice of colors together. It's so pretty. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this shade, which is Per Se, and I think I'm going to use this just as like a really soft liner. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this on the lash line, like the outer half of my upper lash line. Love that. You could also obviously use that in like the outer corner instead of that, uh, nude mauve shade that we did but this is also really pretty just as like a soft liner okay I'm gonna go into this shade here on my lower lash line just to add a little bit of something under here I love that shade too it's like a kind of a bronze a little bit of like a rose gold I guess Okay, I do not have a new mascara, so I'm going to apply some mascara. I'll come back and we'll finish up with the lips. All right, for the lips, I do have a new lip liner. I have used it one time, but it's pretty new and I have not, I don't think I've used this in a video, but it's from Natasha Denona also and it's the I Need a Nude Lip Crayon in 2.5 Lion, Lian, L Y. L-I-Y-A-N and I got this and another lip product because I think it was Tanya Wells is who I saw using these two products and I just loved the way it looked on her so I was influenced. And then I can't believe to be honest, that I bought this next thing because it was super expensive, but like I said, I was influenced and I ordered it. It's from Clay de Poe and it's the Rouge Cream or Cream Rouge Shine Radiant Creamy Moisture Lip Color. This is in the shade 201. This is not typically something I would go for, but look at that color, you guys. So pretty. I think this is supposed to be like a liquid lipstick, maybe? It doesn't say it though, and it says it's shiny. And it looks shiny. So we'll see, I guess maybe it's more of like a lip cream. But it was mainly the color is what got me. Yeah, so I would say this is more of like a lip cream. I love the color though, so pretty. Feels, yeah, it feels like a cream, not really a liquid lipstick and not a gloss, kind of like in between. But I love the color, love the color. All right, so this is the finished look. I wanna kinda of go over my thoughts on these products. So we'll start from the beginning, which was the foundation. The foundation is really beautiful, really, really beautiful. Solid, light, medium, medium at the most coverage, but I love the finish of it. The finish of it, I think, is what attracted me to it initially anyway, because like I said in the beginning, I've seen people apply it and it just looks so natural. Not matte, not dewy, just that natural, beautiful skin-like finish. That's exactly how it looks on my skin. I think it is really beautiful. 
I'm gonna wear this makeup today. I won't be coming back and doing a check-in or anything, but I will leave some wear notes in the description on this foundation if you're curious. I think now that I have my whole face of makeup on, I feel like it is a pretty good shade match for me too. I also did wanna point out, if you're sensitive to fragrance, that one definitely has a pretty strong smell to it, but I will say after I kind of blended it and started applying it, the smell went away. So the smell does go away on me. So just keep that in mind. I know not everybody loves fragrance and foundations. I wish they would stop putting it in, but it seems to be something we can't really avoid nowadays with makeup, but that foundation is really, really pretty. The Dewdrop Concealer from Surat. Okay. I think this is nice. It's just not what I typically like for myself. I like at least a medium coverage. I have a lot of darkness under my eyes and I just don't love super light concealers on me personally. But obviously that's just my preferences. A lot of people do want something like that. And I will say, I mean, I don't know if it will come off on camera, but it looks pretty. The finish is pretty. It has not done anything weird under my eyes. I mean, it looks very pretty and natural. It just doesn't cover everything. So if you have a lot to cover, this is definitely not going to be for you. Like I said earlier, I'm not a fan of that packaging. I wish they would have done just a traditional doe foot applicator. And I do find it to be very hydrating though. So if you struggle with dryness and you don't want a lot of coverage, you might really like that. I'm not a huge fan of the shades, to be honest. 10 shades is not very much. It's an expensive product. I can't tell you that I would buy it on my own. Now having tried it myself, I did get it in PR. So it's pretty though. It's pretty. It just doesn't cover everything. It looks nice. And honestly, I would say the same about the Dewdrop Foundation. That is a beautiful product. Beautiful. But if you do have things that you want covered, it's not going to cover everything. You're going to have to go in with something over the top, like a fuller coverage concealer. This is kind of the same way. This eye is the one with the corrector, and this eye is the one without. Um, honestly, the one without doesn't look too, too bad. But this is my lighter eye of the two. This one is darker, the one that I put the corrector on. So it is nice. It looks pretty under the eyes. As of now, I'll let you know about wear on the concealer as well in the description box, but a little bit pricey for what it is in my opinion. All right, the bronzer. This is probably what surprised me the most in this whole video. This is a beautiful bronzer. I absolutely love the way this looks on me. I The only thing I've ever used that reminds me of this is the Makeup by Mario very similar feel and consistency it but it dries down differently than the makeup by mario the makeup by mario is a little bit more glossy looking on the skin a little bit balmier looking on the skin once it dries down this one is balmy when you first put it on but then it dries to like this velvety blurring skin finish it's really really pretty Never heard anyone talk about it. I don't know about the shade thing. They say this is a universal shade. I just don't know how that could be possible, but that is what they say about it. If you are like a light, light medium, medium skin tone, this is a beautiful product. I don't know why. I don't hear anyone talk about it, but I really like that. Very, very surprised by that. The blush, I had already tried. I love this. I think... I really want another shade. That's how much I like it. I love how buildable the pigment is. It's not intense. You can add more and not have to worry about it being too much, which I really appreciate. And it is blurring, you guys. It is blurring like the Givenchy powder. So if you like that and you are looking for a new, obviously more high-end blush, don't be scared of these. They are easier to apply than you would think. Because I was kind of scared when I first got it, but it's very user friendly. The powder from Rodeal, again, pretty impressed with this. I think this area right here, I love how it looks. Very, very smooth, but not powdery. Not powdery at all. It just looks like my skin, but a smoother 
version, almost like a filter. That's kind of what this looks like right here. I don't know how much it would do in terms of mattifying. If you have super oily skin, I don't know that this would be the powder for you, but if you're looking for that smooth effect, that is really nice. I will keep using it. Obviously, these are just first impressions, but I did really like that. The brow products from Jane Iredale, super nice. Nothing to write home about. They're brow products. The brow gel, I will say, does not feel crusty in your brows. You know how some brow gels, when they dry down, they almost feel kind of crusty? This one does not. does not feel that way at all. It just feels like my brow hairs. I will be curious to see if they hold or if it holds them in place though because sometimes you kind of have to get that crunchy feel to get them to hold so I don't know I'll keep this makeup on and I'll update you below like I said the pencil is also really nice pretty pigmented though so you just have to kind of use a light hand with it but I like how it applied I really like how my brows look today the eye palette okay I knew I was gonna love this and I do. I was not disappointed at all. I think this is a neutral lover's dream mini palette. If you like some sparkle and you like really soft, muted, rosy, nude tones, love it. 10 out of 10. Formula worked great on all the shades. I, I never really have trouble with Natasha Denona's formula though, so I'm not shocked by that at all. I think this is absolutely beautiful. I see myself using this a lot and I love that it's a mini easy to travel with very happy that I bought this and then lastly the lip okay I have to say I love the lip I'm sad to say it but I'm not at the same time because I bought it and it was expensive so I want to like it but I'm mainly talking about the clay de Poe lip cream in 201 okay this is very interesting I don't know that I've ever used a lip cream that felt exactly like this before. It feels kind of, when you're putting it on, like a liquid lipstick, but like a really hydrating, creamy liquid lipstick. And it, I feel like it doesn't stay extremely glossy, but it still feels good on my lips. My biggest issue with lip stains or liquid lips is they're too dry. I do not like something that feels dry. On my lips that is just not my thing I, it, I need to feel some moisture on my lips and this does that but it gives more pigment than a typical gloss I really like it and the color is what sold me like I said earlier I love this peachy pink I think it looks pretty with that Natasha Denona lip liner so those are my thoughts on these new products I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, make sure to check the description box for any notes that I give on the products. At the end of the day, I'll kind of write down there what I'm thinking. Thank you so much for watching. I will have everything listed and linked below for you as always. They are affiliate links, so I do make a commission if you do shop through them. So thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. I hope you'll subscribe if you have not already and follow me on Instagram at simply.blair and TikTok simply.blair1. And I will see you next time. Remember, simply be you.